Today we're making a cold process soap that looks just like a black raspberry and vanilla cream dessert. The members edit of this video includes the full recipe. And if you'd like to print the recipe and step-by-step -step instructions, just follow the link posted below this video. First, we'll make the lye water solution and set it aside to cool as soon as all the crystals dissolve. This recipe will be made in two parts with three colors. I'm combining the oils for the main part of the project, and this is going to be the whole cake. The cake's going to be a light yellow color with two colors of berries piled on top. The fragrance for this soap is black raspberry vanilla, which smells like a creamy dessert. Since we're working with vanilla in the fragrance, I'm going to avoid going for that bright white frosted look. We're still going to use a vanilla stabilizer in the soap to keep the vanilla in the fragrance from turning brown as it cures, but sometimes those bright white soaps, they still tinge even when you do use a vanilla stabilizer. So we're going to have better luck if we design the project around the fragrance oil. So in this case, my oils will give us more of a yellow base. Before we make the soap batter, I'm going to get the color ready for preparation. I'm using Soapberry Purple, Shimmer Raspberry Pop, and Titanium Dioxide. All three of these different colorants do different things in the cold process soap. For example, Soapberry Purple is a morphing mica, and as we're making this, it's going to turn into a kind of a almost a dirty navy green, and then within about a day or two, it'll come back to the purple color. The Shimmer Raspberry Pop will also change color once it's gone through the cold process soap. But this is not a morphing mica. This is in fact just not stable in cold process. Those are two entirely different things, whether one morphs or whether one's not stable. And that means that this bright pink color will stay bright pink in lip balms or sugar scrubs, but it's not really meant for the cold process. I have used this in the past, however, and it does turn kind of a nice berry peachy color, so it'll be fine for this project. Now, you can still use unstable colorants in cold process soap, but you will be experimenting to see what the end result will be. If you're one of those people that doesn't like to experiment and you want, you have a project that you're planning out, then make sure you read the packages so that you know if your mica is going to be the exact same, if it's morphing, or if it's just unstable in cold process. When you purchase it online, then that description should be available for you. Now that both the lye solution water and my oils are right about the same temperature, we're going to combine them together very gently and we're going to blend this down with the stick blender until we get both of them fully incorporated but it comes to a nice light trace. Now is the perfect time to add in our fragrance oil and we will be adding equal parts of vanilla stabilizer to the black raspberry vanilla fragrance oil. Now for me, every batch of soap that I've made using this fragrance oil has behaved very nicely and I've had no issues with it. If we go over to the manufacturer's description, then the description states as follows. Smells similar to Bath & Body Works Black Raspberry Vanilla. Perfect pour, no rising, no acceleration, no discoloration, and the scent is good with a 3.5% vanilla content. So as soon as we get this divided out, we can mix it up and then we'll be ready to pour our cake. The mold we're using is just a plain silicone cake mold and we'll pour the yellow batter out first and then we'll use the two accent colors and just give them a drop swirl and create any sort of design that you like.
Now we're starting the recipe all over with just a reduced increment so that we can just get enough soap so that we can create the berries to pipe on the top of our cake. Now we've done this in two parts so that now that we've completed the first part, it can set aside and it has time to firm up so that when we pipe everything on top, it's nice and stiff and our berries will sit on the top and they won't drop right straight through the batter. So we'll take the time to combine our oils again and do the exact same process that we did before. Now we're going to separate our colors out a little bit differently this time. We're going to make three colors, they're exactly the same as before, and this time we're going to put in two parts of the yellow batter, and one part purple and one part raspberry. We're going to first start with piping out the yellow white colored batter first, that frosting, because that's going to give us something to build our berries on top of. You might find that you want to use a raspberry silicone mold and create an embed the day before so that once you're at this stage you can actually place a real raspberry on top of your cake. But I've noticed that if you use star tips of different sizes then you will get what at the end project looks like a pile of berries and this also works just as well. Piping bags get really messy for me. It's not really easy to be too tactile with thick rubber gloves on, so I like to use a Ziploc bag. And this way I can close the top and concentrate on what's happening on one end. Now my batter's not at piping consistency right now, but that's okay. It's just as easy as putting it in the bag, making sure that it's all tilted to one side so it stays nice and safe, and then set it aside until it starts to thicken up and become piping consistency. Because we're using these Ziploc bags, you'll notice that I tend to hold onto the side with one hand and grasp one end of the top while I'm pouring into the opposite side of the bag. Once the yellow soap batter has reached frosting consistency, then you're going to just start to build a perimeter around your cake. This will eventually be all covered up, but this is the foundation of your frosted edge. I'm using a star tip, but you don't need to. You could use a large oval tip or a large circular tip for this project. Most of this will be covered up anyway. Now my berry star tips are two different sizes. The blackberries are the larger one because the fragrance itself is a blackberry fragrance. So we want this to dominate in our blackberries. So this is the larger star tip and it starts off looking like a pattern, but it turns out that I have enough soap to where we're just gonna start piling it on. So we're just gonna enjoy piping out these berries and then when we move over to the peachy pink, those berries are actually smaller.
And of course, we can't top off our project without a dusting of glitter. And also, a sugar glaze would look nice. So we'll take some mica, dissolve it in oil, and we'll just leave streaks and drizzle it across the top of our berries. Now the oil will eventually dry up and it will leave this shimmering mica behind. Now this looks like a fresh baked raspberry cake. Now you can see how the morphing is happening right now. Our raspberry pink is a little tinged to the orange side and our purples definitely have a tone of kind of a khaki or a green to them. And this is in the process of changing right now. So we'll see the contrast in the next few photos, but first we're going to cut the pieces apart so you can see what it looks like inside. And here are our raspberry cake slices the day after they've been cut. 